from him, mate. But we heard from all the viewers out there and there. They've asked for us to come back. So all three of the Lacrosse WA midweek show here on the Community Sports Show with me, Noel Nolsey Johnston. And as I was going to say, as always, hopefully, fingers crossed, as always, Chris Whitey White. Welcome back, mate. G'day, g'day, Nolsey. G'day, viewers. How are we all? Doing well, I hope. You had a busy week. Uh, very busy week, mate. Lacrosse Field uh, on Saturday. I managed to see a uh, the grand total of four games, which was terrible. Oh, uh, if you include Friday night as well. Oh, yeah. So. Well, we'll get to the State League. But as always, each and every week, this broadcast proudly brought to you by our sponsors, Vision Decor and ID Athletic. Chris, can I say you're looking very smart there today. Apart from just your Western Suburbs shirt, you're sporting a new head. Piece. I do quite like enjoy wearing his hat. It's uh, hiding my bald spot. It's great. And it fits a treat, which is uh, hard for me to say because yes. I, I struggle to find hats which fit my head nicely. So, well, I have a similar problem. Big heads, big brains, lots of knowledge inside both of them. That's what I say, mate. But these hats brought to you thanks to our other sponsor, ID Athletic. For all your club apparel and sporting merchandise needs, ID Athletic have come to the party and given us some merch hats lovely cooling towels and last but not least drink bottles <laughs> so good to have idea athletic on as a sponsor and great to have them as part of the show tonight i actually caught up with the um boss there glenn today and was able to pass on my thanks directly. So thanks to Glenn and Josh out there at ID Athletic and of course, Mike and Lisa Ash of Vision Day Corp for their continued support. Now you can see scrolling across the bottom there, comment during the show to be in the draw for our first ever merch giveaway, mate. I've talked about it for years, it's finally happening. So Jasmine Hinckley will get a few mentions today is already in the draw well done there jazz good to have you with us each and every one of you online if you comment on that comment bar there you're in the draw to win one of everything except us i think our wives might get upset if we gave ourselves away i think even doing some house chores at somebody else's house will be frowned upon nosy <laughs> well we don't well, i don't know i can't speak for you but i don't do too many here <laughs> All right, viewers, well, we'll kick off because as we do every week, we'll go through all the grades within the WA lacrosse team. Uh, and we've also got the women's state team. Thanks for sharing that during the week. That was Mr. Gates from memory. Uh, look, see, they're coming in thick and fast now. Good to have you with us there, Michael and Mel. You know, the and team, good to have you with us. All right, so Whitey. Last week at the under 11s, up early, Phoenix played on Friday night for the State League and their volunteers, actually, that's a point before we forget. So all the volunteers out there, it's Volunteers Week. It is fantastic. All the people who put in the hard yards in Clubland, setting fields up, running canteens, organising sausage sizzles, you know, Cutting well done. Oranges, yeah, oh. whatever. Whatever you do, even if you don't think it helps, it helps a lot. So big thumbs up to all the volunteers out there for your work across all the clubs. We appreciate it, as do the clubs, mate. All right, so after Friday night, the Phoenix volunteers and crew were up bright and early for under-11s down there, backing it up. And it was a tale of four matches. Alkamos defeating Bayswater 9 2. Geez, we also had Phoenix going down to the Black Swans 3 to 9. Well, Wanneroo Junlup 6 defeating East Fremantle White with 4. And East Fremantle Blue 6 unfortunately went down to Wembley 13. Good to see four games going on, Nolsey. That's an extra yeah. one from last week. A couple of East Fremantle teams. In there and uh, and the Black Swans, which I believe is a combined a combined team. It is indeed. You know, so making sure everyone gets a crack, and that's what it's all about. Up under 11s, getting as many people down as we can, and uh, have the kids have a nice run around on a Saturday morning. 
as you say, it's all about having a run around. So we won't do the ladder for 11s and 13s um, because they are mixed teams and they are all about getting a go. This week, having a go, it's actually at your place, Halliday Park this week, mate, under 11. It certainly is. The home of lacrosse in Bayswater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the matches this week. East Reman or Wide v Phoenix. You've got Bayswater playing Wannery Joondalup. And Wembley take on Elkamoth. East Reman or Blue take on the Black Swans. That should be a cracker. I love seeing the little kids run around with their helmets on and, you know, their gloves on and they're just having a go. It's great. No, absolutely. Now, I haven't been down to Halliday Park yet um, so far this season. How's the parking and ground access and all that with four games going on? Well, parking's as per usual. Uh, we haven't lost any parking space yet, but uh, unfortunately, the Metro Net has decided they want to park all the heavy machinery on some of our ground. So we've lost our second field. Um, for those of you who know Halliday Park, uh, basically from where the lights end um, down mm -hmm. behind the Bayswater Hotel there, uh, we've sort of lost probably about a third of our space, uh, unfortunately. So those games, I checked on the Cross WA's fixtures viewers but double check with your club where you're playing because some of those may be at just up the road there at um they um, might be at hillcrest, hillcrest lower but i think the clubs are working together to try and uh rejig fixtures throughout the year to to try and make them um you know people friendly as, yeah as people friendly as we can so that might mean moving an under uh, 13s game to somewhere this week and having it returned to you know, later on in the season, something along those lines. That's just an example here. But, yeah, stay tuned. Now, Michael Gates, apart from... And I should say, uh, Wadi, you can comment anything. And Michael Gates has jumped in there with looking a lot better this week. It's not just these ID Athletic hats. We're not backwards anymore either, Nolte. No, I think that yeah. might have been the challenge last yeah. week. <laughs> All right, well, some would say I'm a bit backwards, but never mind. Moving on, under 13s. Mate, we had uh, Alchemos 8, defeated by Bayswater 19. Uh, Wanneroo Red 18, uh, defeating East Romano 6. While on my side of the piece of paper, Wanneroo Jimla Blue 6, defeated by Wembley 12. And Subi Phoenix having the bye there in the under 13. This week we've got Wembley Alchemos, uh, Bayswater playing Wanneroo Jimla Red. And the last match is East Fremantle versus Subiaco Phoenix, our local derby kind of there. Or one who general up blue get the week off. Love the under 13s, almost as much as the under 11s. It's great fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, when we get to this one in a moment, we'll talk about under 11s because mm -hmm. there was a under 15s game and some questions were asked about playing ages and oh, things the size like that. of the kids playing yeah. uh, yes well, well we'll get to that one we'll, we'll come to that in just a moment viewers <laughs> speaking of the under 15s we had uh Subi phoenix nine defeated by bayswater 14. uh sam wilson banks with all nine uh, the first time i can recall somebody's put away their uh entire team's goals well done sam uh he leads by two on 15 total for the season goal scored for Basie, we had Will Frencham, five. You'll hear that name again a bit later on. Uh, AJ and uh, Benny Pierce put away three apiece. Yeah, not a bad performance there. Good to see Bayswater getting amongst the scores there and sharing it around as well. Um, good performance by Will Frencham. He's an up-and-coming talent at the club. He's an absolute star, that young man. And, and a... He just quietly goes about his work and he's, he's just a quality young man and a very good lacrosse player. Big future in front of him. Well, you're excited watching the under 11s and 13s and all juniors, but we've been lucky enough, viewers, to see a couple of under 15s matches broadcast over the last couple of weeks. It won't happen this week because there's no curtain raiser. But last week, Wanneroo Journal up taking on Wembley up there as a curtain raiser to the night game. This one came down to the wire, Whitey. I caught the last half of this one, and it was, uh, yeah, it was a it was a barn burner. It was uh, fantastic, backwards and forwards, 
goalie saving shots left, right, and center. Yeah, it was just a cracker. And some good shots in amongst it as well. Um, some young players showing that they are ready for the step up. In the end, though, one of the Joomla on 10, and with five seconds to go, Wembley were on nine. And then, <laughs> bang. <laughs> That's another draw. I believe uh, there's been nine draws already this year in the junior grades, which uh, someone told me that stat the other day, which was, uh, yeah, hard to believe, but it's it's uh, really tight, really tight. Good lacrosse being played. Well, that's good for the sport as well, though. No major blowouts. You know, we'll see a few across the season, as we said it yeah. last week, tale of two halves in a couple of grades, but just getting out there and the young men, not boys really at that age, young yeah. men, um, showing their appreciation. And the one original upside, it was Braden Hogan with three, Jack McCracken, and if you don't mind, I mentioned some of those shots. Oliver Bell with a little casual on the crease, popped it over the shoulder. <laughs> Showtime highlights. Showtime real, yeah. highlights, yeah. Uh, then both with two for one route June Uh We had uh, Bug Gill Newsom with New Newsom. There we go. Well, it's happened again because the uh, the uh, names have got me with uh, two apiece, including the equaliser. So that was with less than five seconds on the clock. Yeah, Jackson Newsom, the star for Wembley, if you like, um, claiming it there. But as we move over the page, we just want to do a couple of shout outs in the under 15s. I'll tuck that one up there. Um, have a look at the ladder first, though, mate. Mate, we've got uh, Wembley up there on top of the ladder. Uh, I believe that's Bayswater second. Oh, Wanneroo Joondalup. Oh, Wanneroo Joondalup. There we go. I didn't even bring my specs. No, no that's okay. Uh, Bayswater and Subi Phoenix there. Next week, we've got Wembley playing Subi Phoenix and Wanneroo Joondalup playing Bayswater. So that'll be a ripper of a game, I reckon. One or a June Lup v Bayswater, both on one win. Really an opportunity to stay in touch with Wembley, who have been pretty good in the under-15s competition in the two matches I've seen them so far. Yeah, they're, they're solid. They're solid at the back, Wembley. Uh, they've got a great young goalie uh, and their D-lines. Yeah, they've got quite a bit of experience. Uh, I believe most of them played for the uh, Thunder team last year when the championships were up at Joondalup. So, yeah, they're, so they're going to be hard to score against. And they've got enough uh, firepower up forwards uh, to put away a few goals. And, you know, defence wins, uh, as I said, defence wins championships. So watch this space. I reckon that Wembley team will be hard to beat, to be honest. But having said that, Wanderer Joondalup also has some guns and so does Bayswater. So, yeah, it's going to be... Game on. Oh, it's going to be fantastic to watch. Awesome. Um, it was good to see, though, and as you mentioned, lots of young talent coming through. One of the young talent that what you mentioned, uh, Wembley's goalie, Ruben Mann, one young man that didn't get a mention during the call because he wasn't numbered on the list, Sandra Jackson, I've got to thank you for all the work getting the team list ready because on Saturday, mate, and this is what I just want to briefly touch on, for the viewers out there that aren't aware, if you watch the footage of our under-15 stream, you'll see there are six young players from Singapore slash America, some American kids living in Singapore with family no. here in Perth. Um, six of them took part in the game. Both sides took three each. Nice. Nice. And I believe that also happened in, so they played two games, in fact. They went from the first game up to the second game. Yeah, what a great experience for those kids, you know, flying all the way down from Singapore, running out on the lacrosse field, having a couple of absolute cracking games. And, uh, yeah, how good. Uh, it was good to see. And well done to the two clubs, or all four clubs, for incorporating those players in, to their squads at the last minute. And that's what, how I heard it went down. But well done to all those. And the young men from the US Singapore side, Charles Messi, Danny Whitehead, Rowan Craig, 11-year-old Joey Krynak. Now, he stood about three foot six, I reckon. Mm. 
And <laughs> the, oh, he ran his little heart out of that bloke. <laughs> we'll definitely give him credit for running his heart out. Tyler Mulholland, I thought, was one of the good import. Oh, I'm calling them imports. I've been in lacrosse long enough now. I know how the system works. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tyler Mulholland and Ben Burnett, well done to them. But I missed out during the call for Ben Kinnamon. So shout out to Sherry for keeping me informed there. Thanks, Sherry. Um, so that's a wrap, really. Uh, the 15s this week, you'd have to think Wembley over Subi Phoenix. I'd say so. Uh, I'd say so there. Wanna return up Bayswater? It's going to be a tight one. I'm going to go Bayswater, but you saw that coming, <laughs> didn't you, everyone? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, but having, having said that, you know, um, Wanneroo has got Captain Canada uh, running through the forward line there. Um, you Captain know, Canada? <laughs> Brayden Hogan, he's. Oh. Uh, He's he's a quality young young player. Um, he can, he knows how to put the uh, as as the Americans would say, or the Canadians would say, the biscuit in the basket. Um, he knows, new, oh, I've been in I've sport been, a long time. That's my first biscuit in a basket. I've been listening to too many podcasts uh, from the US lately, Nosey. But uh, yeah, no, he's a really good player, um, and he can turn it on. I think and uh, put the ball in the back of the net. But uh, hopefully. Uh, Young young Ben's back in goal, so basically you can save a few of those. So it'll be a cracker, I reckon. Close game. All right. Well, um, I'm going to try and get Biscuit in a basket into the call <laughs> on Saturday. That is my objective now. Before we move into the 17 men's and the ladies, just a reminder, this broadcast proudly brought to you thanks to our sponsors, Vision Decor, for all your blind curtain and awning needs. I don't need a blind here because the studio wall is decorated in all these fabulous shirts. I need a current Bayswater one. Just put in a call out there. I've got some oldies up there. Also, Wanneroo, Junilup and Subiaco, if you'd like to feature amongst all the shirts here. Feel free to drop one off or message me because Vision Decor and ID Athletic can help us and you with all your sporting apparel, uh, blinds, curtains, whatever you need, we've got sponsors that cover everything. All right, 17's men, mate. One of our up had to buy, so they yeah, enjoyed yeah. a week off. Nice to uh, nice to have a rest every now and again. Um, but as I say that, it says, <laughs> yeah, I'll, so have, I'll a have of, a word to the statistician. There was, a, there was a bit of confusion in the under-17s um, competition. Well, a bit of refixturing, I should say. Yeah, unfortunately, um, the East Fremantle boys couldn't quite get a get a team up. So we've had a few of the, of the young fellas come over to Bayswater to give us some more numbers and, and get a bit of a run up. Uh, so they get a bit of a run out every week. Uh, which I think is great. Yeah, uh, and the competition works together to try and to try and make things happen. So everyone everyone gets a run and everyone has some fun. Because uh, I think you know a lot of the boys, uh, to be honest, who are at the top end of the under 17s competition uh, are playing state league or division two later in the day. Yeah, and and they really put you know their focus in on on that and have a bit of fun in the under 17s. I mean, it's it's on. Don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah, you can you can see with them. Um, some sometimes some of the positions the kids are played in and and the way they go about it they spend more time you know socializing on the field than playing which is not a bad thing well it shows it's, how the sport yeah. is across not just here in wa but uh with the national championships coming up those relationships good on and off the field across the lacrosse family so as a well, result of one or general up not having the buy because of that adjustment <laughs> They took on Wembley. And they had a draw too, Nolsey. That was one of those. Another one. Another, another one. one. Another one. They had another draw. So, uh, yeah, Dan Rodriguez put away two. Uh, so did Braden, uh, Jake Madison, Adam Jerajian, and uh, is that Kyle Jorgensen? That will be young Kyle. I'm going to go yes because I've got Jorgensen on the sheet, no first name. Yes, there we go. Uh, and um, Wembley, for Wembley, Charlie Clark put away five. He leads the uh, goal tally on 11 after only playing two games so far. Uh, John Narby put away three. So, yeah, and then the, the game that I saw, uh, Subi Phoenix three were defeated by Bayswater 12. 
uh, Alex McBean put away four. Will Frencham, that name again. Uh, three for Basie. Um, two to Oliver Bolu. Yep, I'll take your word for that, Frenchy. But there I'm going. So I'm, I'm yep. good at tying my tongue in knots. Uh, he was the highest scorer for Subi Phoenix. So that was well, well done there. And Alex McBean unable to play on the Friday night for Bayswater against Phoenix, so having an impact there in the under 17s. Yeah, yeah, he had a run in the twos. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see that shortly. <laughs> we'll get that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get see there that shortly. Yeah. Now, just a reminder, viewers, if you want to get a free water bottle, Whitey, I, sorry, I didn't put him on notice, or a free uh, drying towel, Again, sorry, mate, I didn't put you on notice. Or a free community sports show hat. Just comment in there like the others have, Jazz, Mel and Michael in the running. At the end of the show, we will draw it. So all you have to do is say hi, tell us who you barrack for. Doesn't matter. Um, because this week in the under-17s, there will be lots of barracking as Wembley take on Subiaco Phoenix. This one, 2v3 while Bayswater at home against uh, Wanru Joomla. Well, I, I, I reckon oh, you just, you can't tell. You never know what, what the kids are going to do on a Saturday morning. But uh, surprisingly enough, I'm going to back Bayswater in that. But I reckon that's the match of the, of the fixture of the round for the under-17s, Bayswater, Wanru Joomla. I reckon Wanru, they've got some, uh, yeah, really good kids running around that can score some goals, so. Okay. It could be interesting. Well, I mean, you look at the names there. Rodriguez is playing state league. Uh, Matheson's had a couple of runs as well. So, well, Braden, uh, Braden Hogan, and uh, Adam Jerajian played in the under 18s uh, state team yeah. recently, so they can they can definitely play. You know, and um, luckily, luckily enough for Bayswater, you know, we've we've got three reps uh, now playing. With us, so Lucky Wills has come over from East Fremantle to have a run. We got Mitchell White and Clancy Buckley, who also played in that 18s tournament. So, it, yeah, it's, it's going to be an start. absolute ripper. Well, a couple more people jumping on there. Good day to you, Nikita, Kylie. Lovely to have you with us, and Brendan Ballerine, timing it perfectly as we segue now into the junior women leading into. A bit of conversation about the ladies and gentlemen online there. Junior women, I'll kick it off as Whitey catches up there. Under 14s. And as we said last week, these sides are combined. So we won't go out too much on those. No score information in the first game. One of June Lap 8 defeating Phoenix 6. While in the second match, Bayswater. They've been some good work here in the juniors, mate. We've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, Bayswater, too strong for East Fremantle, taking that, that one out, 13-6. I do just want to mention, though, five for Emerson for East Freo and five for Addison Reardon for Bayswater. Some good scores there. Mate, I tell you what, they can put the biscuit in the basket. There we go, Nelsie. <laughs> Another one for you, mate. I'm getting that in there. But young Addie, she, she's got one hell of a shot on her for a young lady. Uh, she's got a lot of power, a lot of speed in those shots. So, yeah, I believe she's a big fan of young Charlotte North, if we all know who that is. She, yeah. can, she can shoot. And uh, Addie can shoot the lights out as well. So, yeah, wait wait for uh, wait for a few years when she's, uh, you know, really gets some muscle on her. And uh, I'll tell you what, She's got one of the hardest shots I've ever seen in the in the junior mm. women's grade. Well, that's a big call, but mm. that's fantastic for the future. Well, this week in the under fourteen ladies, it is Wanneroo Junlup up against Bayswater, while Phoenix take on Wembley in the other match for the fourteenth. Fantastic. Yeah. Where are, where are they this week, Nolsey? Uh that was a question without notice. It was, it was. Sorry, uh, no, I was having a put you on the bus there. Oh, That's no. payback, right? <laughs> there, viewers. That's all payback. Uh, um, if anyone online knows where the 14 ladies are, I actually thought they played where the... Um, well, now, you, now I'm not completely sure. No, I'm not completely sure either. Because so the I'm, ladies this week, I do really know. Quickly. I know you're trying and I'm going to sneak forward. 
I know the state leaves at Wanneroo June. Well, that's where it'll be then. All right, there you go. We can confirm the junior ladies at Wanneroo June as I get rid of those notes. Oh, actually. We'll come to that, Whitey, because um, Jazz has already entered there, but we'll just sneak it's Wembley. with us. You beauty. Mm. I just brought that up, Flurry it Oval. There you go. Good news. Well, that's what we're talking about, latest breaking news, and there you are. You can't get much fresher off the news. And that one, thanks, Jazz, for the information there. And Mel also jumping in with that information. All right, under 17 ladies, Bayswater enjoyed a week off last week, mate. They've been going well at the moment. Yeah, they're tracking along quite well. They're, uh, they've got a yeah, star started line up there. Um, Almost a draw in the first game. I know, another one. Almost. Almost. Uh, it was 11 14. Wanneroo went down to Wembley. Chloe Duckworth uh, put a, another five away for Wanneroo June Love. Uh, but oh, I'm going to get my tongue tied again here. I'll take it for you. Mate. Thanks, mate. Sophie Birigetti of Wembley had six, and Zoe Chobanoff also chipping in with four for 10 between them of the 14. Uh, Tammy, good to have you with us. Thanks for your input there. Always a pleasure. You're now in the running to win our very special first time ever merch pack, including these fabulous hats. The drying towel, we won't make you hold that up again, Whitey, and the drink bottles. Um, thanks to our sponsors, ID Athletic and Vision Day Court, although the merch is courtesy exclusively to ID Athletic. For all your sporting apparel needs, hit them up. Um, okay, looking um, at the second match, East Fremantle v Phoenix 2 versus 19. No scores listed for um, East Fremantle, but Freya Pine, the biggest scorer listed in the stats. They didn't add up. I'm terrible at maths, but there was only 11 on the sheet out of 19. Stay in uh, school, kids. Yeah, Freya Pine. With four was the biggest, and two to Corey Rainey for Phoenix um, out of their 19 this week. We've got East Fremantle taking on Wembley. Uh, Phoenix are taking on Bayswater and Warnery Junior Love have the bye. Right. So we're on to the ladder now, Nolsey. We've got Phoenix up the top on percentage from Bayswater with two wins each. Uh, followed by Wembley Wanneroo with one each and one win each, that is. And East Frio are yet to get on the winner's list. Well, the comments coming through thick and fast because they know, mate, I've had to get my researchers. We're about to go into the women's division too and there's lots of excitement across the WA lacrosse community because they all know that something special happened last Saturday, uh, last Sunday, I should say. Um, and we're about to get to it. I almost feel like it should have a drum roll, but we'll save that match for last, I think, as a teaser. <laughs> Just as a teaser. We'll work bottom up, I reckon. Go on, Nosey. All right. In the first match, Wembley 8, defeating East, uh, defeated by East Fremantle 10, Jenny Edwards, who must have had burning ears on Saturday. We were talking about Jen. What's her partner's name? You know, mm, you, you, you question with throw me under the bus. Yeah, there, no, right, it's, right, the, it's the night for that. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone out there knows yeah. Jenny's partner's name, because he came up and then I said, Oh, yeah, Jenny, she's a big supporter of the show. She had four, two to Gail Allen and Sally Banyard with two as well. While for East Freeman, or five to Jess Kennedy, four to Lucy Wills, and that uh, was a single to Johnica Kennedy. So six to the Kennedys. You all hear that name loud and proud down at East Fremantle. Uh, well, in the other game, we had one original up 12, defeated Subi Phoenix 8, with uh, three to state coach Megan Shanks. Yep. But the highest scorer for one original up was four with Veronica Frances Francesini. Cassini. Yeah, right, there we go. You got uh, that, mate. I know how good. Uh, Angie Somerville, uh, Top the the Subi Phoenix Subi Phoenix scoring with three. All right, now you can see lots of people online there. I think it's appropriate, Whitey, that we get you just to shuffle to the left or right. It doesn't really matter because 
the Alchemos pirates. Arr, 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 arr. I'm actually more a pirate these days or a Collingwood supporter, whichever you prefer. Although I'd take a pirate. Oh, you're over. a author fan. I, am, the, but, I, I digress, but you know. Oh, I am. Um, trust me, I am. Um, however, these days, more like a Collingwood supporter. Sorry to all my family. I've got two sisters that are at Fordham and yeah. I'll get feedback on that, no doubt. But history in the making. Five years after joining the competition, mate, Long Road, mm. Alchemos. The women. Defeated Bayswater. 8-7. Go the Pirates. Well, congratulations, uh, ladies up there at Alchemos. I know you guys started from scratch uh, way back, you know, five five six years ago when the club was forming a fantastic effort to, to yeah. you know play that long wear that hard and you know look like uh, you're having so much fun out there on the field so uh, congratulations that was a uh, one <laughs> one goal win to Basie uh, against Basie so it was hard for him to get that out mate, but you did well it's all right I'll get the tissues later uh, but special shout outs go to the original OGs Kiralee Hyde Tamara Sanders Nikita Crane, she was online there, is online. Melissa Kilroy and a lady who's in our tipping. She's not just good at lacrosse, mate. Jasmine Hinckley, the last of the OGs. Good to have you uh, get your win there, ladies, with Mara Crane getting four, Kirsten Smedley three, and the single, perhaps the game-winning goal to Grace Elford. Um, while Carly Sigler Getty was the lone goal scorer or top goal scorer, I should say, for um, Bayswater in that match. Now I can see lots of comments coming in. Let's just bring a couple of them up. Shani Dine, um, go us pirate ladies. Thanks for the shout out. Well, you deserve it because I tell you what, Whitey, five years is a long time. It's yeah. a long time to go without a win, isn't it, Nosey? What's the longest in your career? Um, I've, I think I've, I'm, I must be up to about somewhere between 20 and 30 games over the last six years, uh, for Bayswater Division Three, and we've had one win in that time. That's probably the, the longest drought, um, I've had. Well, uh, I'm already feeling told off because Jazz Hinkley, a pirate and a Collingwood supporter, so <laughs> well, I feel some sympathy for you there uh, but look i looked it up we got the researcher into the office this afternoon and said right nolsey find the biggest stat you can on the longest losing streak what do you reckon it might be well uh i've got to see in front of you <laughs> I, I, know you so. <laughs> I know you do mate a long a long long time you think about uh the perth wildcats of uh until up until last year have played finals for what 30 odd years you know, in a row. That's that's a streak. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't quite this long. Um, however, it was it was a long, long time without having a win. And unfortunately, it was a basketball team. It was. It was the California Institute of Technology. Their basketball team went 207 games, 11 years without winning a game. So, so yeah, the five-year struggle for you ladies at Alchemos is... Uh, it's real. It's real. And it's there, but you only got half of that. So, yes, well done. Um, and then Campbell jumping online there with a comment around the fact that it happened this week as it was two years since they lost Big Russ. Ah, uh, yes. Um, and another example of the lacrosse community coming together to celebrate our unique sport. It is a unique sport, and there's a lot of unique people in this sport. And without notice, Nolsey, uh, unfortunately, I, I might have put my big foot in my mouth, and uh, I need to appear uh, at, at a game uh, for Bayswater in uh, a uh, in a skirt and with some pom poms to do some cheering. So, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting the call out there, uh, people. If uh, anyone has got a tutu or a skirt that would fit a, uh, you might need a four four. I, I will need a four four. <laughs> a, a larger gentleman, a more portly <laughs> figured gentleman, or or even has some pom poms lying around the house. Uh, please get in touch because I need some for uh, Sunday, and uh, 
if you want to laugh, come and have a giggle at me while I cheer on some people and try and embarrass them. And to everyone out there, please get photos and share them because we'll put that up as our profile pic just for a day, mate. No, no worries, mate. No, but, uh, no problem at all. I say that as a Hawthorne supporter because just on Monday night, Elkimos, congratulations. I know it's not um, five years, but my darts team hasn't had a win until Monday night, we had our first win as well. We were inspired by the pirate, maybe. Nice, nice. Um, and it was a come from behind win too, so even sweeter there. Um, but look, I took a bet on because a lot of my mates, I don't know what's going on, but they all barrett for West Coast. And as a Hawthorne supporter and a battle of the wooden spoons, mm. uh, this week, we basically said, okay, we'll have a bet. But we reversed it. Instead of the loser having to pay the punishment, the winner will pay the net, the loser's fees for the next week because the loser will be on the bottom of the ladder. Oh, geez, there you go. I know. Uh, the things we do in sport, eh? I know, right? Percentage, isn't it? Um, yes, yes. So, yes, like I say, speaking of bets, I, I, I might have uh, <laughs> shot my mouth off and uh, and uh, I'll uh, give a big, uh, a big shout out to... Stacey Smith, who got the play on Mother's Day with her daughter, uh, Coda, for Bayswater oh, in that team, which was great. And uh, I might have said if she comes back and play, I'll cheer her on with uh, pom-poms and a, a skirt. So, yes, <laughs> got me out there. Uh, yeah, get in, get in touch by the show if you if you don't have me on socials. And uh, there we go. I'll and make I'm... an idiot of myself, not for the first time and not for the last. Well... I've I've taken bets where I've had to wear opposition's jumpers and things oh, like that. So it's not too bad. It's all good fun, though. Oh, absolutely. And it was good fun out there last week at um, Penistone Reserve for the Ladies State League on Mother's Day. As Whitey said, um, big shout out to all the mums who were out there playing with their daughters. That's a great thing, I think. Yeah, oh, fantastic. I know, I know playing lacrosse with my oldest son and, and cricket with uh, my middle son, you know, nothing better in this world. Whether you win, lose or draw, it's great. Uh, good to have you with us there, Tyler. Welcome to the um, my, welcome to the crew. Cheers, Tyler. <laughs> Connection there, Whitey. Uh, young Tyler plays for Wannery Joondal up, uh, plays Long Pole, made his state lead debut on, on uh, Saturday night and uh, handled himself quite well. Uh, he played in the 18s uh, as well, and uh, yeah, he, he's a good young, good young long polar, and I don't mind over here with his old man, so. <laughs> or anyone's old man for that matter, but drink responsibly. Um, Stay in school. Yeah, learn your maths. All right, so happy Mother's Day, shout outs out the way. Um, we'll tick off the Ladies State League. Wembley, eight, defeated by East Fremantle, 17 in the opening match. Three goals to Holly Plummer and Olivia Robinson for Wembley while it was, I need four of your fingers, nine. Last week it was 10, this week nine. Maddie Copeland smashes it out. 25 goals in three weeks. Can't play that young lady. Can't play. Can't play. Um, to put her on top of the goal scorers for the Women's State League. Two to Tegan Brown and Callistro Keith as well, chipping in there with a couple for East Fremantle. And here we go, Nolsey. Uh, we had Phoenix taking on Bayswater with uh, Phoenix putting seven away. Unfortunately for them, Bayswater put away 15. It was great for the State League ladies to have their first win of the season. Well done. Uh, well done to Ashton Hiram with uh, five. She sits second on that goal scoring list with 13. Uh, it's good to see Chloe Tatlow back. I believe she uh, put away five and had another three or four assists in there as well. Uh, Veronica Keane, Skylar Levy, and Isla Fraser with two each. Fantastic. Well, it is, it is great, you know, and there's a number of young ladies in that list of names as well for Bayswater, so the That's future right. is bright. I think I say it every week. I look across the training and, and the girls just look like they're having so much fun. Um, so, yeah, it's nice to be rewarded with uh, with a W in the column every now and again. Well done. All right. And the final match of last week's competition for the Women's State League in Lacrosse WA 
Wanneroo Joonal up six, were defeated by Subiaco, 15, 3 to Alana Davis, 1 to McKinlay, Angelov, and Chenoweth for Wembley. Uh, Wanneroo Joonal up. Well, for Subiaco, well, she's a seasoned campaigner, is how I'll describe her. Kate Hooper in amongst it with three, joined on this occasion by Amelia Spear. Two to Emma Grant and two to Ruby Coswara as well. So good performance by Subiaco. They're sitting on top of the ladder. They're a force to be reckoned with, I reckon, Nolsey. I don't. Um, yeah, it would be interesting. I'd like to see them, uh, the East Korea Subi game. That'd be a that'd be a matchup, uh, which is coming up actually this weekend. It is. I know how good. Uh, yeah, so if anyone's free to broadcast that one for us, I'm happy to give you access to the page so you can stream it. That'll be a barn burner, I reckon. I'm unavailable, but um, put a call out if any ladies want to jump on the camera, hit me up and we can leave you a setup for the weekend for you to do that game. Um, Other matches, we've got Bayswater taking on Wannery Journal up and Wembley uh, at home. We do have it there, Nozzy. See, we are we are sort of organised. Yeah, I, that's why I had to look down there. <laughs> Wembley taking on Phoenix. Um, well, the latter, we mentioned Subiaco on top, East Fremantle in second, both with three out of three. They're undefeated, so this one will decide who's going to be clear on top. One who June up in third, Bayswater, Phoenix, and Wembley rounding out the rest of the crowd. Uh, in the women's state league competition. All right. On to the uh, the men's div three. Uh, we had uh, Phoenix defeated by uh, defeated by East Fremantle four to eleven. Uh, Dave Whiteman turning back the clock with uh, two and five. Uh, and we had Luke G with three, uh, two to JR uh, with uh, Joe Lothringen. Lof, oh, the tongue is tangled again. <laughs> Lofri, lo, everybody knows. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. I can't even do that, Nozzy. Uh, we two uh, singles to uh, Dave Halloway and J.K. John Kelly, Joe Lofgren, for those wondering at home. Um, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I He's did. been around a while, Joe. Everyone knows Joe. <laughs> Good on you, Joe. Uh, and that's not even his real name. A good player, too. Uh, uh, well, in the men's Div 3, Bayswater got out on the park this week, but went down 13 8 against um, Elkhamont. I believe it was 10 uh, 8 at three quarter time, too. So uh, the boys putting on a, yeah, we've got a bit of youth in that team, uh, I think, Nolte. Yes. And it's good to see the good to see the boys giving Alkamos a run for their money. Uh, they're quite a good team, that Alkamos, with. Uh, with the younger, uh, well, young, I say young, he's a day younger than me. Brad Smith <laughs> with three, Simon Danby, and Chris Ford. Uh, three for Robbie Morris, to, again, turning back the clock uh, for Basie with two to Julian McGrath, and a young fella who's only just recently completed his first season of lacrosse, yeah. young Nathan Collar. Well done, young fella. Uh, good to see. And just before we pop into the next game, a reminder, plenty of comments online there, plenty of people online as well. A big shout out to you all wherever you are. Thanks for joining us. Chris White and I here on the Community Sports Show. Just drop a comment in the comments bar there and you could be in the running to win our first ever exclusive Community Sports Show merch pack, including these fantastic hats here and that water bottle. And a towel, but we'll save that. Oh, there it goes. I'll go into Alana <laughs> mode. <laughs> Jeez, we're silly. Uh, you can have your lacrosse SATV, but do they have merch and models like us? I don't think so. I hope not. So, want to original <laughs> up? Oh, let's move on. Want to original up before we get comments on our looks? Uh, defeated Wembley 9 6 in this game. It was Cameron Walker with four and Blair Coggan with three for Wanneroo Joonlup, while Jeff Healy and Dave Bullen uh, with two each for Wembley. This week, oh. mate, we'll run through the ladder first, I reckon. Wanneroo Joonlup uh, clear on three wins. Wembley in second with two. They've had one loss. Elkhamos 
with the buy. So they're sitting in third at the moment. Uh, East Fremantle, Phoenix, Subiac, uh, Bayswater, and then Subiac rounding out the men's division three. And this week we've got Wembley taking on Alcamos, Baysy taking on Phoenix and East Frio at home to Subiaco. Well, some close games expected there. You'd imagine Wembley v Alcamos, 2v3, both on two uh, wins. Uh, looking at the lineup there, as you mentioned, some experience for Alcamos in Smith and Danby, um, while Wembley not prepared to let that slide either. Some experience in that group. Your tip? Oh, You're neutral. Geez. Oh, well, I'm going to tip Wembley to, to get over Alchemos. Uh, I'm going to tip the Baysy boys to get over Phoenix. Uh, not if I play. If I play, I reckon Phoenix will win. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon each three will uh, get over the top of Subiaco. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with you, really. I'm going straight down the line there, um, as you'd expect. All right, Division 2. Now, why do you add a Div 2 match? I think this is... I, I did, yeah, right? you, you do, you do. I went along and watched uh, Wannery Joondalup 14 defeat Bayswater 4. Wannery Joondalup, uh, Rowan Panting got, uh, Panton got 4. Uh, 2 to Will Chinsky, Sal Kochi, Co- Co- Cam... Mm, Carl, oh my days. I'm okay. I'm okay here. You've been at work all day, mate. I have. I so have, unfortunately, you, yeah. I have, and I've uh, had And to Ben Jones with um, singles to uh, Yamichi Sims, Jack Doherty, Alex McBean, and Benny at two dads, Thomas Gill. You know, I, I, I saw this game and I, I thought to myself, oh, geez, if we get within 10 goals of, of this one or a junior lap team, because they are very strong. Uh, we would have. We, I think you can call that a uh, you know count a win. a win for Basie. And you know, I I was really impressed with um, the way the two goalies went about it. Uh, you know, young Lucas in goals for for Basie had twenty four saves. Wow. Uh, he had twenty four saves, uh, and only let in only let in fourteen goals. That's uh, not a bad young percentage. And um, the Wanderer Junior goalie had twelve, I believe, as well. Good thing the scorers were taking him down for me. Uh, that was yeah. That was really, really, really good to see. Um, the boys, uh, yeah, took it up to to that really strong one team. Uh, you know, there's, they've got half their state league team from last year playing in there. As, as long as as long uh, uh, as along with uh, last year's um, fourth highest goal scorer in state league and one of June Love's highest goal scorer in Will Chinsky. So, you know, that that's a stacked team, and uh, yeah, I reckon. Harry and the boys did really well. And Cam Mulcahy last year thought he was going to take out the goal scoring, so he's no... Oh, yeah. Oh, he, he knows what he's doing. Uh, ben Jones spent, uh, you know, last season playing, well, and quite a few seasons. He's a quality player uh, playing state league. So, yeah, the, um, they're a great team. It'll be interesting to see um, when they come up against East Fremantle because East Fremantle are quite strong. Um yeah. So in, in in the twos, and when they're both at full strength, uh, it could be yeah that that's going to be a barn burner. Barn burner. Yeah. Lots of biscuits in baskets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just locking that one in the old grey cells for Saturday. Uh, Craig Allen just jumping on. We won't highlight that one, Craig. But um, tight competition in the threes uh, for the men this year. Mate, it's fantastic. You know, some of the top end threes teams, I reckon, to give the twos. So some of the two teams will run for their money. Yeah. Yep. yep. Great competition. All right. Now, just running through the second match, he's three men will defeat him Wembley. This one, 7 0 at quarter time. I think that may have been the difference here, Whitey, because these three men are running now 18 4 victors. Um, 7 0 at quarter time is not the sort of start you want to come back from. No, it's always tough there. You know, especially when you've got your ACD midi in Tyler Sprunt putting away five. Uh, you know, Tristan Johnson uh, put away four. Was that three to Jed Martella? Yep. Who's uh, having must be having a rest from the state league this week because uh, he's again a quality lefty up there. So uh, yeah, Wembley. We had two to Fraser Gill, uh, Purton, and Nabi again with one each. John Nabi just stepping across the grades there. Good to see. This week, 
Wanneroo Joondalup up against Wembley at Floriot. It's three Manlet home against Bayswater. A leader in the goal scoring down this division, Will Chinsky, as you mentioned, uh, ex state league player, probably not sure what's going out there. His brother Keanu playing state league, so maybe we'll opt in for work or something like that. Yeah. Um, but Will Chinsky leads with nine, uh, and that's ahead of Lockie Wills of East Fremantle on eight. Low scoring in Div 2 uh, amongst the leaders. They're tight pack. So we'll see what comes across the table there. Ladder? One or a up on top. Three wins with a percentage of 611. Uh, East Frio go two and one. Uh, Wembley one and one and Basie with a zero and three. I didn't make you do that, so that's all right. <laughs> uh, but that's the men's division two. This broadcast each and every Saturday as well, proudly brought to you thanks to our sponsors, ID Athletic and Vision Day Core. And just a reminder, Vision Day Core uh, for all your blind curtain and awning needs. Plus vinyl flooring, I found out the other week. Why do you? Is there anything they don't do, Nolte, when it comes to uh, house interior? Cool? Yeah, mate, it sounds like they can do it all. Great products in a great range because they're great people, thanks to Vision Decor. And our exclusive ID Athletic merch giveaway. You can relax, buddy. Oh, Unless you want to do it. But like all those comments there, jump online. You can um, win this exclusive. First ever release, uh, cooling towel, uh, community sports show hat, and drink bottle just by commenting. We'll draw that at the end. So don't go anywhere. You've got to be online to actually accept the prize. And I'm all set up to do that. So um, stick with us for the remainder because we're nearly there. Into the men's state league. Friday night kicked it off. Friday night, the Lions, Phoenix defeating Bayswater in a Relatively close one for the bulk of the match, I thought. Yeah, it was even at half time, uh, or close enough to yeah. be even at half time. And uh, and then yeah, then uh, Phoenix decided that they were going to have it all their own way in the third quarter and uh, put the uh, biscuit in the basket uh, a couple too many times for the Basie boys. But uh, I think this is a really good indication of of where both clubs are at. I suppose when you when you talk about the youth that they've got. You know, the Phoenix core youth has, has been together for, you know, Jeez, four or five yeah. years now playing at, at, at you know, DB2 and state league levels. And, you know, they're all 20, 21, 22, 23 sort yeah. of thing. And they're getting the experience. And I think that's where they're two or three years in front of, of Basie where they're, you know, they're, they're spread small 16 through 19, 20 rather than 20 through 23 sort of thing. So, yeah, really good signs for the Phoenix, I thought. Uh, you know, Travin Goals was uh, made a lot of really good saves. Um, yeah. You know, big shout out to uh, Guardi, uh, Gary, in our, uh, in our goals. Uh, I thought he had, a, he had another ripper. Um, you know, he, he saved. He's a shy guy, though. We got him up to the mic afterwards, and I got, I reckon, 10 words out of him. He's a quite achiever, Nozzy. He's quite achiever. He lets his, his uh, saving do, uh, do the talking. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's this year in State League, I reckon, WA has the strongest range of goalkeepers uh, around. You know, we've got yeah. Trav down at, at Phoenix, you know, who's a, who's a world-class, you know, goaltender. We've got Guardi, who's come over from, from the US, who's, yeah. again, a quality goaltender. You know, um, Subi got Bidwell Barton, who's a quality goal. He's a world-class. East Freo got Sparkles. He's in the Aussie team. He's world-class. You know, Red Johnstone. Red Johnston back in the goals this week. Uh, when we get to that broadcast match, I'll, I'll yeah. bump his tyres up again because he's amazing. You know, um, and unfortunately, McRae was out for Wembley. Uh, but even with him missing, we get Sammy Williams step in. And unfortunately, again, he was out. And then you bring up another one. You know, you 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 bring, you know, you, bring, you just, the list just keeps going and going. <laughs> so it's hard to score goals in that grade, uh, you know. And, and it's really fantastic to see. Well, it is hard to score goals. But to wrap up the Friday night, we'll just highlight who did get some. It was three to Ethan Moyer and Zeth Velsecki, while Cade Moyer and Luke McCrone, both with two JBC, 
Jesse Bowen Curtis with three for Bayswater and singles to stop. He was back into the side. I thought he had a bit of influence early. Just set it Soppy, up. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a good he's a quality player. He draws out the best defender every week, week in, week out, and still has a, a great influence on the game. So you know, now he's uh, probably picked out his wedding venue. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, get a few more goals out of him. <laughs> and the general pattern uh, with a single as well. Subiaco 4 were defeated by East Fremantle 11. Subiaco, no information there for us to share. Unfortunately, why do you do not get to enter the draw? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've given you a hat already. If you'd like a drink bottle for all the work you do, I'm happy to give you one. And I'm not sure that our drying towel or cooling towel will be enough of a tutu for you to wear on Saturday. I know, right? So, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm just trying to share the, share the show, Nolsey. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, again, if anyone has, uh, you know, I, I think I might actually need four pom-poms because uh, I might have a guest along with me to, to cheer along. To oh. cheer along. So, yeah, if, if, again, if um, if anyone has any pom poms lying around, please get in touch with the show or, you know, a triple XL skirt or a sport <laughs> or whatever they are, something I can whack over my tracky deck so I don't freeze because um, you ain't seeing these bare legs out in winter time. They're white enough in summer. Uh, but yeah, please get in touch with the show and uh, have a good giggle at my expense. All right. And you mentioned the broadcast match, it was a close one. Grand final replay under light Saturday night. This match, big shout out to the nearly 4,000 people that saw it and also the 4,000 that saw the Phoenix Basewater game. So Friday night games, all you clubs out there, if you can schedule them, I'm happy to be there. And if I have to do Friday and Saturday nights, it's proving to be popular with the viewers. It's on you to organise your schedules to accommodate that. This one going down to the wire, though, Wanneroo Joondle up by two. Mate, I thought the Wanneroo Joondle had it in the bag going into the last quarter, and uh, then all of a sudden Wembley decided to play, and uh, away they went, putting four to one away in the last quarter to to get in close. Uh, again, I thought it was a ripper of a game. Wanneroo Joondle up, you've got Polkinghorn, You've got Walker, you've got Gillespie sitting in the forward line. Yeah. That's a that's a potent mix. Um, and, uh, you know, I've got, got to say a big shout-out to Lukey Oliver, who jumped into goals for Wembley, who, you know, yeah. were, like I just mentioned, were, were undermanned. Uh, I think, no offence, Lukey, but fourth, maybe fifth-choice goalie. Um, you know, uh, he jumped in there and yeah. gave it 100% and only let in 11 goals. Uh, he did have good defence in front of him, but still, um, yeah, fantastic effort. Comes from his mother's side, I believe, his goalkeeping ability. Apparently so. I learned that as well uh, on the uh, on the broadcast, Nolsey. I, I believe you mentioned that. So, well, that was Ridgy. So, big thanks to Jason Ridgy Ridgewell for his commentary on on Saturday night. It was meant to be in the studio. So, if anyone's seen Ridgy out there, please. Let him know we're concerned for him and he can reach out if he wants to say hello. <laughs> um, but Ridgie did a fantastic job again, yeah. mate. Um, crowd favourite, good to see. And uh, really, the ladder represents where it's at. East Fremantle on top, Wanneroo Joondalup in second. Wembley, compliments of that loss, now drop down to third. Phoenix, Subiaco and Bayswater rounding out the top and bottom halves there. No great percentages of interest, though. Wanneroo Joondalup taking on East Fremantle at East Fremantle this week. Mm. Match of the round, Nolsey. Match of the round will yep. be the broadcast match, indeed. Um, but Wembley up against Phoenix might be easy for Wembley. No. But you'd expect them to get a win at Floriad over Phoenix? I'd say so. Um, hopefully uh, one of their first choice keepers is back in the cage too and that will make the um, the Moyers brothers' life a bit hard up forward, unfortunately for them. I reckon Wembley, Wembley on top there. Yeah, well, that presume... Well, Wembley will should jump to second because, I mean... East Fremantle, if one route June up, take the... It comes down to percentage, yeah. doesn't it? It'll be an equal second if, if they can get up there. Um, 
but I'm gonna I'm gonna tip Basie for the win against Subi. Um, again, a quality goalkeeper there. Now, hang on, I'm not sure who Aaron's talking to. I suspect that you. Oh, that is me. And, uh, yes. bottom. I will be. Don't you worry, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't know what that's about, you have to go back and watch the replay because. <laughs> White is in search of pom poms and skirts and tutus. <laughs> Don't ask why. Um, but, but yeah, I reckon I reckon the Basie Subi game is also going to be a tight affair. Uh, I think so, actually. yeah, I reckon we got three really good games on here um, this week, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. Um, but I, I'm going to tip the Basie boys. I have to. You have to. I've got yes. no choice. I have a child playing in that game, hopefully, if he gets selected. So. Well, speaking of Bayswater faithful, Tony Barker jumping online because only a few minutes left to go, viewers, to get your comments in to be in the entries for our exclusive TCSS merch giveaway. Thanks to our sponsors, Idea Athletic Hats, drink bottles, and fantastic cooling towels, which double as scarves um, and car carafes. Is that what you call the fancy? That's uh, the French scarf. Yeah. Yeah. Not the drinking carafe. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but look, we're giving that away. You've got to be online. If All you've got to do is say hello in there and you're in the draw, which we'll do as well within the next five minutes, I reckon, Marty, because we'll wrap up Men's State League. It's a three way tie for the. Goal scoring title at the moment, all tied on 10. That is Jordan Gillespie of Wanneroo Joomla, Matt Wood of Wembley, and Mitch Kennedy of East Freeman, all three names we're very familiar with. We'll hear a lot of those throughout the season, as well as uh, we've got Ethan Moyer, Ryan Hockey, both on nine, when uh, Lucas Wood, a couple of goals behind his uh, Showtime brother, Matt. He pulled the moves out one particular uh, move on Saturday. It was It was amazing. The old backhanded, uh, upside down Indian pick up, round the back, pass the, that's with the stick round the back, pass the ball, go through the footage, have a look, show your friends. That's what we want to see in State League for lacrosse. Fantastic. Now, Nolsey, we neglected. Yeah. The, we, we, uh, us. yeah, about us. And I, you know why I think it is? Because that team was announced a long time ago. The, the women are a lot more organized than the men here. Yeah. And uh, so, congratulations to all the girls who, made uh, Megan Shanks and Aaron Law's team to take on the rest of the country at the national championships. They're on the 7th to the 11th of June at the Sturt Lacrosse Club. Nolsey, who made the team? Well, as we did for the men, we'll run through the ladies. I'll take my side. Um, <laughs> unless you want me to take the other one. Um, Madison Copeland, Bailey Eastman, Emma Green, Bailey Keenan, Skylar Levy, uh, Shannon Mitchell, Georgia Portlock, and in from the States, it's Chloe Tatlow. Um, I'll do the rest if you like. Oh, I'll have, have a run, mate. Uh, a we're, we've got Olivia Antonoff, Alana Davies, Isla Fraser, Kate Hooper, Osha Levy. Yep. Good to see you getting a run with her sister. Uh, Aaron Mitchell, Posey O'Keefe, and Hannah Stampala. Now, I reckon... That that is an absolutely stacked team, Nolsey. Mate, there there's... there is not one name on that list that isn't world class. They that is a really fantastic bunch of of ladies there, and um, you know I, I say this not not tongue in cheek, but I reckon they've got a big chance of of pulling this off. You know, uh, you have got the American experience of Osha Levy and and Chloe Tatlow straight coming straight off you know, college seasons. So they, you know they're going to be fit and ready to go. Uh, you know, Madison Copeland, Emma Green. But I, we, I'm good, just going to list the whole team again just because <laughs> they are just their quality in, in all positions. Um, I well, can't I can't see them losing a game, to be honest. I know that's a big call, but just, just well, oh, they're just some talented ladies at this game. They were good last year, and mm. Brendan Bellarine jumped on and said, seriously, talented group of women. Absolutely. The challenge is to manage the expectations, though, because yeah. sometimes <coughs> um, you can put too much pressure on yourself. And I think the best advice in my experience is, and I know it's a cliche, but go out there and do what you've done every week. Mm. Put it together as a team, 
and then you will just play your natural game and dominate, I think, most sides as well. I Although think, England yeah. were pretty good last world for the ladies, from memory. Uh, yeah, they were, but we won't speak about that, Nozzy. Okay, so um, is that <laughs> a sub taboo subject? Yeah. Okay. But I look at that list and, and all of those and all those ladies have experience. There's there's no newcomers still across there. They are they are experienced and it's uh, yeah, great to see. Well perhaps if we can maybe yeah, someone out there can organise for me to pop out perhaps next Thursday night to training and we can interview Megan or Erin or a couple of the ladies. That'd be a great way for us to get some of the women's promotions up. And if any of them would like to take this seat here in the studio, please, oh, uh, by all means, you know, uh, come in and have a chat. You know, let's let's really focus on the the women's side because realistically, or I watch a lot more men's lacrosse and know a lot more about men's lacrosse than I do about women. So, yeah, we welcome anyone to join us here in the studio, um, and that offer is very well extended, Whitey. All right, talking about extending, we're going to reach all the way across to Victoria now for a quick wrap-up of their last week's matches and the ladders. Go ahead, mate. If you want oh. to do Victoria, I'll do South Australia. How's all that? Right. Okay. <coughs> um, Footscray, they were up against it. We mentioned um, the passing of Chris Miles last week. Footscray having to overcome that in a close match against Competitive Malvern nine versus Malvern seven. MCC thirteen defeating Chadston. Go Chaddy! Come on, Chaddy! Come on, Chaddy! Uh, Eleven. Caulfield four in a close neighbourly um, competition. This one for those unfamiliar, Camberwell and Caulfield just up the road from each other. That one, Camberwell ten, Caulfield four. Runs week 15 over a gallant Surrey Park. And I hope I'm uh, looking forward to a boot scooting session coming up. Altona defeated by Williamstown 9 19 in that one on the men's ladder. MCC, Mol uh, Footscray, Malvern, Williamstown, Eltham, Brunswick at the top, Camberwell, Altona, Caulfield, Chadston, and rounding out the squad there is Surrey Park. Well, for the ladies, just two matches. I say two matches. Yes, I've got two there. Um, <laughs> Footscray 25, defeating Malvern 6, 5 each to Steph Kelly, Ebony Norman, Sarah Mollinson, and Sayaga Hagi. You wouldn't mind having four in your team getting five each, eh? Uh, you'd take that, wouldn't you? You'd take that. And if that's not enough, Sarah Smith rounding it out <laughs> got four as well. Um, Newport. No scores here, defeating Camberwell 21 4 in the ladies' ladder. Footscray, Williamstown, Newport, who had the bye, Malvern, and Camberwell. And in South Australia, Nolsey, we had the uh, well, North Eagles had the bye, so they, they probably enjoyed the, taking their mums out on Saturday night. Yeah. Um, for Mother's Day, uh, we had Brighton 21, defeating Sturt 4. Now, Brighton have put away 41 in two weeks. That's a lot of goals. Uh, Glenelg, Glenelg 14 defeating Burnside 3, Woodville 15 defeating East Torrance, Farnham 7. <clears throat> and on the ladies' side, we had the E. No, that's the ladder. That's the ladder. That's the ladder, no. Nolsey. Jeez. No, well, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're the expert. And I, I just sit in the chair. Right. Uh, that just shows no experience necessary, just an ability to read. Yeah. Sometimes I struggle with that. Yeah. We have the Eagles. We've got the Eagles on top on 12. Glenelg, Brighton and Woodvale on eight points. Sturt, Burnside and East Torrance Farnham on four points each. And in the ladies' side, here we go. Uh, Burnside, six. Brighton, nine. Woodville, 20. Another big score. Uh, defeated the North Eagles, five. With Isabella Verenson with four for Woodvale. And uh, we've got Brighton, Glenelg, Burnside, Woodvale, and North Eagles in that order for yeah. the ladies' ladder. And Woodville and North Eagles swapping places as a result of those results last week. Now, viewers, we haven't had much club news shared, uh, but Scotty's just jumped on in time. We've got about two minutes left because in the clubland world, I have heard 
Uh, we spoke about fundraising that Wembley were doing for their world players and such. I believe something came out today, Nelsie. Is it? East from Adelaide having a quiz night for their rep and also for uh, they've got a couple of umpires and Sammy Gosling's going away as a media guy. So um, Kim Panton, uh, Tim Kennedy and Sparkles. <clears throat> so yeah, have a look on their on their Facebook page and get involved. Quiz night down at Ishmael. Oh, quiz night's always fun. All the proceeds going to support the guys who are going away to represent Australia in three different genres, which is great to see everybody, uh, other people other than players included. We've got the refs and the media team in there as well. So good work, guys. All right. Now, it has come time, Scotty Glass. Um, we'll just acknowledge uh, that there. Go the Pirate ladies, bloody legends. Well, congratulations. And, Scotty, by commenting there, you're in the draw for our exclusive merchandise pack, which we're about to give away, viewers. If at any point during the night you've commented on the stream there lots of you online lots of comments tonight thanks to you all and i give most of that to the elkamoth pirate ladies jumping on board Arr. all right so why do you hang on let's hang we on had six, what six, i'll do six, hang different. on what i'll do is i'll pull Ooh. that up ladies and gentlemen here is the official prize giveaway lucky barrel it only has five numbers on it at the moment but do not panic why do you? We had 16 different people enter. And that in, does not include myself being a smart ass. Yeah, Seven, no, nine, including me. <laughs> it doesn't qualify you. No, it doesn't qualify me, does And it? just for the record, I think that's ball or something, basketball. That looks like a basketball to me, Nelsie. Uh, yeah, we'll close that. Um, right, so what will happen here, viewers, is we've got the numbers from 1 to 16 around the spinning wheel. And based on when you commented, you've got a number. And you... do we have one more in there? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. no. no already on the list. Already, in there. already on the list. Jenny's in there. All right. So what we're going to do is spin it, and that person will be the recipient of the first ever community trip. So let's do our question for our athletic and the winner. But our most ready is going to be the. Evan. Melissa, Melissa Jane. Melissa oh, Jane. Well, up the top there, Nosy. There, there, there we go. Our Pirates Lady. Arr. Oh, there she is. We'll pull that comment up. The Pies and Pirates. Well, winning all round, Melissa Jane. Congratulations to you. Uh, we'll get in touch with you as soon as the show's over to figure out how you can collect um <laughs> mount uh shani sorry i should say let her know melissa yeah yeah well see that's what we love yeah, how good how good how is good it that you. everyone's on board and melissa's already celebrating so mel just message me and the show and we'll be able to um get your prize pack to you thanks to our broadcast sponsors id athletic who have generously donated all this merch for us. Um, all right. I'll Why tell you what, Nolte, if, if somebody can get me a skirt and some pom-poms, this prize pack could be delivered by a man in a skirt and pom-poms. Mm. <laughs> well, the offer's out there, viewers. I might have to put that up, and I might have to Photoshop you in a tutu. Thanks, mate. With pom-poms. I still look good in a dress. I saw the picture. I'm not so sure about that, but... <laughs> Anyway, that was your private collection, and we won't share that with the viewers out there. We'll leave that there, won't we? We will. Okay. On behalf of Chris White, I am Noel Nolsey Johnston. We are the Community Sports Show, where we take local sports to you, our global audience, each and every week. A reminder, this Saturday, just the one broadcast, no Friday night, no Saturday afternoon, it's Fremantle v. Wanneroo Joonlup at 6 p.m., on the community sports show thanks to vision decor as well as barna construction and ashby farrell white arch and of course id athletic on that note we'll sign off until next time take care stay safe stay i was about to say something inappropriate then 
stay safe and always remember be nice to yourself but just as importantly be nice to those around you take care and see you saturday